We have over uh, 75,000 women in our Slack group. Uh, so come join. Uh, and they're all talking about their salaries and they're finding work. And we do webinars and we got the book. All right. Number one. Asking for a raise is not asking for a favor. I think as women, we are often quite socialized to just feel really grateful for what we have in our life. And we feel bad when we are burdening somebody. And oftentimes that does come in the form of when you ask for more money, there's fear that maybe you'll jeopardize the relationship in some way. They are expecting you to negotiate. This is part of the process of having a job, okay? Now, the other thing, because again, when we're socialized this way to always be grateful, it's hard to undo that. And I, I understand that. So a mindset shift that I have found to be helpful in my life is really imagine yourself as a business, right? I am the LLC of me. And for those of you who are freelancers and own your own businesses, right? You know what I'm talking about here. Now, when you go and pitch an investor for funding for your business, it's basically like what you're doing now, right? You are going to your boss or potential boss and you're saying, come and invest in me. Well, what happens when you ask for an investment as a business and why do they invest in you? It's because you're going to give them a return on their investment. Again, it's not charity. So what you want to effectively demonstrate to them is you've got a good track record. They can feel confident in you that you are going to deliver on those results. And you're going to use evidence from the past to show that, which I'll get to in a few slides. Plus, by the way, I think it can be easier for us to advocate on behalf of somebody else than on, you know, even for ourselves. And so imagining ourselves as a business maybe gives us a little bit of that distance and you may find that it's uh, just gets a little bit easier. Step number two, talk to people about how much they make. I know this is scary. I actually host a podcast with John Hancock called Friends Who Talk About Money. Here's how you're gonna do it. First, you're gonna think about who in your network is very well networked themselves. They are somebody who is, can be totally valuable to you. Because if you go to them and you say, I'd love to connect with somebody who does something similar to me, who maybe works at a similar company, would they be willing to share their salary? And because it's coming from a friend of a friend, right, it can feel a little bit safer. The other thing I want you to do is go find on LinkedIn a competitor company to the one that you're working for or the one that you want to work for. Find a person in your role or in a similar role. Reach out to them and tell them I sent you. Blame it on ladies get paid. Say that you are concerned that by not talking about money, we all might be underpricing ourselves. And guess who gives, who gets the power when we don't talk and when we underprice ourselves? The power goes to the employer, okay? So when you reach out to them, you don't necessarily have to say, well, how much do you make? You can bring the research that you've done and say, am I off base? And by the way, in that research, it's a pay, it's a range. And I'm going to talk in a minute about how you kind of narrow the range down to have a specific ask. But the point being is it's not whether or not you talk about money with them. You have to talk about money. It's just really how you do it. This is the research I did. Am I off base? Or would you be open to sharing the range of what you make? And by the way, when it's time for you to negotiate, please reach out to me, however I can support you. Um, and do that for other women. Oh, Though here's the thing, if you only ask other women, uh, we might all be underpaid. So make sure that you're including white men in that research. Having evidence, having hard data, those numbers, it's going to make you feel just so much more confident when you go in and negotiate. It's just math. Now, have a comeback ask because in a negotiation, if they just say yes really quickly, that's probably an indicator that you didn't ask for enough, by the way. So do start with a number that makes you a little uncomfortable. Uh, otherwise it's not high enough. And I'll go over that in just a bit, but in a negotiation, I think you can expect that it's going to go back and forth at least a few rounds. So assuming that you might not get that initial number that you want, right? That I call it the F you money, the rockstar money, have a comeback ask, because if they say we can't do that, it's okay. How about this number? And that number is going to be in the middle of that range. And it's called a pay band, by the way. And you're going to have a bottom line, but we're not going to think about the bottom line for right now. So come back, ask. That is a number that you have to be really proud of if you get it. Because again, most likely it will be what you get. Which, by the way, there's research, uh, two pieces of kind of conflicting research, and you all might have heard of this. The old research has said that women don't negotiate or they don't negotiate as much as men. Newer research says that women do negotiate as much as men. We're just not getting it. 
I think it's mostly, I actually think it's the latter. And by the way, you know, I have over 75,000 women in the Ladies Get Paid community and more than 2 million messages have been exchanged in our Slack group since 2016. So I've really seen a lot of conversation. It seems like most of these women are negotiating. Here's what I think is happening. I think they're just getting told no. And they're saying, okay, sorry, never mind. Whereas the man, whereas the men, maybe they're told no and they go, okay, how about this number? They keep the conversation going. That's my personal hunch. So just remember the comeback ask is just as important as the initial ask. Money isn't everything, uh, which I know as ladies get paid, probably shouldn't say that, uh, but it's true. It's true. You can get so much more than money. Uh, and this is particularly important to keep in mind. If you are getting that, no, there are other things that the company can give you that it brings you value, right? But maybe doesn't cost them much money or any money career development, flexibility, uh, gas money, right? Once we start commuting again, Metro card, cell phone bill, internet at home, right? You're doing work for them. They should pay for it. Uh, signing bonus, more commission, more equity. I'm like how many more can I list? I mean, it really, it shows you that there's just infinite ways that they can bring more value to you. I have a little bit of controversial advice and it's only controversial because other coaches will tell you differently. So, you know, take everything I say with a grain of salt. I would start with the salary, finish that conversation, right? Come to an agreement on the number. And then you say, I want to talk about my full compensation or I want to talk about my full comp package. The reason I wouldn't bring up full comp first or as part of that initial conversation is because if they know that you want something else, right? Like going to a conference, they could maybe use that as leverage to get the salary down. What I'm not talking about is stuff that is a deal breaker for you. If you must have workplace flexibility, you must bring that up earlier in the whole process, maybe even in the interview process. Otherwise, you're wasting your own time, okay? Now, you might be thinking, well, Claire, if they can't give me more of a salary, then how would they be able to give me a signing bonus? Or how would they be able to pay for me to go to a conference? Different budgets. Right? Different budgets. Even think about this last year. Companies, a lot of companies not doing well, which by the way, a lot of companies are doing well. Some companies not doing well. They used to have travel budgets, right? Sending people all over the world, right? Thinking about companies you've worked for. They always have travel budgets. They didn't use those travel budgets this year. They can pull from other budgets, other departments, and give it to you. You won't know until you ask. And I'm going to get to how to ask in just a minute. Now, here is something super, super, super important. You are not going to get this money because you've asked for it. You're not going to get this money because you deserve it. You're going to get this money because you've effectively demonstrated to them that you are a top performer that should get top dollar. It's not about hard work. It's not about assuming that your work speaks for itself. You need to speak for your work. And the most important part about that is really knowing what your impact has been, particularly on the bottom line. Uh, this is easier for some roles. Okay. So if you're in sales, I get it. I brought in X dollars. Okay. For those of us who maybe don't have that kind of easy evidence, first of all, you do need to know exactly how you are bringing money into the company, even if it's indirect and go to your manager, go to other people say, I want to start thinking like an entrepreneur here um, and really understand my place in the ecosystem of how this company operates. Okay. So that's a conversation you can have later. I would maybe look at um, save time saved resources, uh, your contribution to the company culture. For any of you guys who are recruiters or who work internally in HR, I mean, you understand that it is expensive to lose talent. So you being able to demonstrate how you've helped the team dynamic, right? How you've helped the team improve their work, that's big, that's really big. So make sure you also talk about your strengths, right? Not just what you've done, but who you are as a person, uh, even your process, right? You got 500 people to come to an event, but what's more interesting is you telling me, how did you actually do that? Because that's going to show your strengths, your creativity, your resourcefulness, right? Your grit. Even pretend like you're in a movie and you're telling this story of a main character. Again, getting some distance from ourselves, I think it just becomes easier. Now you're looking at this slide and you're like, accept your fear. What, is, what does this mean? Uh, first of all, I want you to practice. Practice, practice, practice. And uh, then I want you to also tell to yourself, practice makes perfect. No, 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 no. You know why? Because that puts a lot of pressure on yourself. No more perfection. 
This is all about yourself. Like, what are you going to learn, by the way? Um, no, the reason you're going to practice is A, you're going to be ready for any scenario, which I'll go over in just a minute, of what they might say, okay, and what you'll respond with. What I mean by accepting your fear is when you practice, really pay attention to in your body, when you start to have heart palpitations, right? Get really nervous and say to yourself, you're good. You're good. If it happens, I got it. Because if it does happen, you've seen it before. And I think removing that element of surprise is not going to knock you off. Except it's also kind of like Buddhist about this, right? Don't fight the fear. It's going to make you even more agitated. Go first. Also controversial. You may have been told never, ever, ever be the one who says what you want first. I completely disagree because you know your market research. You've also hopefully understood what the range is already for the role. Otherwise, you know, why would you be applying there? It could be, again, wasting your time. Uh, same thing as a freelancer, right? You should feel really confident in your market research, but you don't have to say, this is the number that I want. You know what I mean? You could say, this is the number I want, but of course, you know, I want to learn more about your budget, the scope of the role, hear what you're thinking, right? So that this is a conversation, not that you're starting with your bottom line, unless you are, but I highly discourage you from doing that because then the conversation is going to end really quickly. When you go first, you are anchoring high. You have become the powerful one in the conversation. I'm also worried if you do, don't go first and they're the ones who say the number first and it's not what you wanted, it could demoralize you a little bit. So go first. Go first, speak to the greater good. I mean, say things like, I know this is a company that pays people fairly. I know this is a company that values gender pay equity. Even if you don't know that by saying it, it sort of holds them accountable to this greater good. Say things like, I'm sure we can figure this out together, right? This is a collective thing. Remember, they already want you. Like if you were this far in the interview process where they're even giving you an offer, if you've worked there long enough to where you can even negotiate your raise, they want you to be there. It is in their best interest. They don't want you to walk away. This is asserting yourself too. Like you've done two things. You said, this is the value that I know that I bring. I've done my research, but also curious to hear your thoughts. I'm sure we can figure out together. It does that balance, which I think, unfortunately, women, and I know you all know this, we have to constantly walk that tightrope of like being assertive, but not appearing aggressive. And that's how we're socialized and sexism exists. And I'm not going to solve that in nine slides, obviously. Uh, nine, last one here. When you do well, we all do well. Remember the wage gap. Remember the leadership gap. There's a reason you all showed up today. It's systemic. It's overwhelming. It can feel really depressing. Like, you know, as an individual, what could I possibly do to combat the wage gap? This, this is how you do it because you're going to close your own wage gap and you're going to tell another woman how to do it. And she's going to tell another woman. No, this does not change the system. It just helps you, which is a first step. To change the system means we need to change laws. And so if you're curious about, you know, where you can be focusing your efforts in that space, universal child care and paid family leave are two places to really put effort in because those are, I would say, if I had to pick any laws, if we enact better paid family leave and universal child care, you're going to see a lot more women staying in the workforce, not being marginalized, Okay. Uh, and I could go on and on about the wage gap, but do keep that in mind. You doing well for yourself, it does help move the needle at least. Oh, oops, there was a bonus one. Sorry. Uh, join Ladies Get Paid, ladiesgetpaid.com. Uh, we do webinars and events every single week. We have a video library. We actually have an equal payday summit that's going on right now. Uh, if you want to check out our YouTube channel on Ladies Get Paid uh, or go to ladiesgetpaid.com slash equal pay, I also wrote this snazzy book. Would love y'all to check that out. Ladiesgetpaid.com slash book. 320 pages, way more uh, than the, the 10 minutes that I gave you today. And I'm just so appreciative of the time that you gave me. Speaking of which, I think I did a pretty good job on time. It was a little scary uh, getting some nods. Um, also, if you have any questions uh, or want to keep me posted on, on how everything's going with you, I'd love to hear from you. Instagram's the best place. Claire gets paid. You can also learn more about me at clairewasserman.com. Now go get paid, guys. I'm so honored to be the last one here. Uh, so, you know, save the, what is it, last for best? No, I don't want to be competitive with anybody else. But uh, appreciate you all taking the time. I hope you found this helpful and happy Equal Pay Day. Thanks Thank so much.
Claire. Thank you so much to Claire for being here with her final words of inspiration to our amazing mentors. Um, and to all of you who joined, and I hope that you got some great advice um, and stay in touch. We do a lot of these type of events as well. Um, check out Ladies Get Paid um, and go ask for that raise. I mean, that advice was so good that it does start with us. And so we will be sending out a survey um, in our thank you email. So please let us know how the event was, um, share your feedback. We're always trying to make it better. Um, and again, just a final thank you to everyone for being here, to our mentors, to Claire, and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much.